My name's Lisa Tamari and I'm from um, Taranaki, uh, called Te Atiawa Takaiwi. Um, and it's a real privilege to be here today and I'm really looking forward to sharing some stories. Joe's going to have a bit of an interview with me in a minute. Um, for those who don't know, I do a couple of things. Um, I'm an ultra marathon runner, probably first and foremost, um, and been a professional athlete for the last 20 years. And I've had lots of adventures around the world, so I've had... Uh, in that time I've managed to run over 70,000 k's or three times around the, the equator and um, been in pretty much every desert in the world and, and run through everything um, and had some amazing adventures. Now I've had some tough times too and I'd like to share with you uh, some of those stories. But right, first it's, up, it's great to have uh, one of the, uh, the icon Māori Kuda Wahine sharing the stage with uh, Toi Māori. Uh, market uh, today. Uh, so you ran a, uh, a, a um, for charity through New Zealand. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, it was one. Um, this is uh, back four years ago now. Um, I had a, a. I've got a bucket list of, of runs I wanted to do, and I wanted to run from the bottom of the South Island up to the top of the North Island for charity, for um, canteen and for cure kids. And um, it's 2,250 kilometres, or 52 marathons, and I had to do it in 33 days. That was the goal. So roughly running 70 to 80 k's a day, um, and every day, and visiting schools along the road. Um, and that was a hell mission, to be honest with you. I've never been so exhausted. I've never been in so much pain. Um, and there were times during that race when I thought, or that run, I thought it was too big. You know, when you're standing at the start line and you're facing down the barrel of 2,000 odd kilometres and it suddenly sits on you like an elephant and you're thinking, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> what did I think? Why did I think I could do this? And I remember going over to my mum and I'd been so busy with the, with the preparation for this race that I hadn't actually thought about doing it. And I went over to my mum and I had a bit of a cry, 6 a.m. in the morning standing under the sign and bluff. And I said, Mum, I think I've bitten off more than I can chew and I'm really terrified and I don't know what to do. And my mum said to me, some of the best advice, you know how mums do, just look at the first hour. Don't think any further. Don't think about those 2,000 k's. It's too much for you to cope with. Just think about taking that first step, just taking that first 10 k's, just getting through till lunchtime, getting through to the end of the day, break it into bite-sized pieces. And that's some of the best advice I could have. I did that. I started, I took that first step, and I slowly but surely we wound our way up the country. And then the body started to fall apart. Got shin splints, got a ripped a hamstring, I had a rash all over my body, my immune system was starting to fall apart. But I had a, a real big motivation. I had some kids from Canteen come out who were faced, facing cancer. And some of these young, young kids, I had a 13-year-old boy by the name of Wayne, and he came into my room, sent in by the crew one night when I was having a bit of a tonguey, and he was sent in to have a pep talk. And he said, you know what it means to us kids with cancer, that you would take up the bat and that you would run for us, that you would support us, and do you know how special that is to us? Well, that shut me up pretty quickly because I thought, you know, a 13-year-old boy, here he is, you know, you can't usually get boo out of a 13-year-old boy, can you? And here he is trying to encourage me, and I'm thinking, yeah, I can do this. If he can fight, fight cancer, if he can face that at 13 years old, then what the hell am I moaning about? And we had another young lady, uh, Lana, who was 19. And I remember getting off the ferry in Wellington, and we had our TV and mirrors and all that sort of jazz, and I said to Lana afterwards, so what are you going to do this afternoon, love? And she says, oh, I've got, so I've got to run another 30 k's. Oh, woe is me, you know, last thing I feel like. And she said, oh, I've got to go and have chemotherapy. And that shut me up again, because I realised it doesn't matter how much pain I was in, it doesn't matter what, I, was, I wasn't facing death, and I wasn't facing chemotherapy. And this young lady was facing that with a smile on her face, you know, and that was a bloody good lesson for me to learn. And we finished that race. And that young lady unfortunately lost her battle six months later, but I will always remember her, her smiling face in the face of adversity. You know, she never gave up. Yeah.